the world, it's your boy Jeremy Alexander Newsom with reallifetrading.com. I hope everyone's doing simply sensational. It is indeed that time of the week, which is Monday. Today was actually Mentorship Monday for those in the trading rooms, and I'll be delivering over five hours of recording content today, and what a phenomenal day it was to record that much content. Jeepers creepers. So here's SPY, and just kind of hide this for a second. You'll notice a pretty nice um, pennant pattern here forming on SPY, and mentioned that it was probably gonna be um, the blue, pink, or red. You guys might remember that kind of drawing from recently. Well, it doesn't like it's the pink, and blue is the winner. So kind of my expectations from here is probably a little bit about semi what we have drawn here. So I do expect some lower lows to come in. Now, granted, we actually haven't gotten as low as we were in February. Now we're gonna get there probably tomorrow, but this 253 level is uh, likely where we trade into. Now this, again, pennant pattern right here, we probably will retest that tomorrow into about 260 and then look for a little bit of a, you know, lower move more than likely. But here's the long-term moving average and we were looking at it this, uh, this afternoon. Here's about the 15 minute chart. And we were looking at day trading this. So, oops, let me take this off for a second and uh, just hide the drawings and really zoom in here, turn off the long-term moving averages. So what we were looking at on the SPY, this is the 15 minute chart, is there's a really good support level, as you can see here, about 258. So as this candle was forming, right, it was out of support, had a nice white candle, a lot of selling has come in here at this particular point in time. And um, I was like, hey guys, let's wait about 15 more minutes. This was right before I go to lunch. I was like, let's wait about 15 more minutes to see if we in fact break out of here. And uh, this would be a great buying spot. But we never, we just simply never made a higher high. So overall, uh, it broke down. And in the uh, recording that I have for this afternoon, I mentioned after it broke down, I was like, all right, guys, big breakdown, let it retest, and then look to go short again. A nice little uh, old support, new resistance trick worked out pretty well on the SPY. So every day, all day, SPY giving multiple trading opportunities and excited to see what's going to happen today and figure out what goes and what transpires from here. But I still have a Condor for April, and the bullpit spread is getting a little bit close. I'm going to take off the bear call spread unravel. And this target doesn't look like we're going to get up there in April or May, at least at this particular point in time. But again, the, the uh, bull put spread of this portion is 239, which is still pretty far away. Now, granted, there's only three weeks left, but I'll be keeping a close eye on that. But yes, it does look like SPY is going to be breaking down a little bit more. Here's the DIA, the Dow Jones ETF, and the Dow Jones, let me get that pulled up. Obviously, had a very fresh gap action. Gapped out really nice off the 100. It was a retest gap. We did retest. We finally made it down to the 200 on the Dow for the first time. So again, at this point, market is built and created for day trading. Not gonna be shocked at all if we bounce off the 200 or if we don't, it's a bearish gap. Today was a bearish day. We could easily continue lower tomorrow. I'll be interested to see if we do, but really at this point, nothing's gonna surprise me just on the day-to-day -day actions of what we do. Here's some stocks that were requested over the weekend. Enterprise Products Partners, so example, EPD. And here's the weekly chart and EPD, nice support level. And you'll notice we have been here before. So if I draw a nice little support resistance line right about there, we've bounced off of here back in 2012. We got a lot of choppy around 2015, 2016, late 2017, and we're back again. So on the daily chart, what's interesting about today is you have a nice high wave candle and you do have some lower shadows coming in. So if I were looking at personally playing EPD, which I'm not, but if I were, I would want a close above this particular price. So this would be an end of day bullish close above 25.02. And depending on my time frame, I'd either have a stop below the low of today, below the low of this candle from March 28th, or if I'm a little bit of a longer term trader, I'd have my stop at 23.02, which is an even $2 of risk. Here is OMER and uh, Omeris Corporation had a really nice gap, just uh, never bounced off the retest. So you had a white candle gapping up, huge gap. I mean, guys, that's going from 1147 to 1776. So what was that, 70% gap, huge move. So you obviously know anyone who bought into this region 
uh, is going to be selling at open. Plus, there were a lot of white candles back from March, right? You had earnings, a lot of white candles, get back in. Everyone selling. Uh, that's just a beautiful fade. So it comes down here, gets two high wave candles back to back. That's probably where most real life traders were looking at going bullish was a break above the high wave bullish candle here on uh, what day is this? The 27th of April. You had a nice inside day candle on the 28th of March and we just never broke higher. So that would have been my setup right there. Um, but now that we're breaking lower, I would say you can only get so many bearish candles in a row before you get some type of pop, but it seems to me that we're going to come back down to this support down in here somewhere. So if you're looking at buying, I'd probably say 904 by, I don't know, 604. Give it some room. Obviously, it's a volatile stock, and we'll see if it can bounce from there. Here's Signal Corporation, ticker symbol CI. CI trading real sideways. Challenge on this one, uh, and this will be one that you should keep your eyes peeled on for a potential fast break day trade is the weekly 100 is now um, on Signa Corporation right there at about 160 and some change. So can we bounce from there? The answer is indubitably, sir. We've bounced before. Now are we gonna do it, just bounce and continue to run for the hills? Probably not, You're right, right? Last time we did chop around for quite a bit before we really, really bounced. But that's gonna be a good support. We'll keep an eye on it. We'll see exactly what it can do. Uh, the daily trend looks nice. It's just the weekly. That's why I'm kind of watching it for just a fast day trade. Maybe you can get one or two points with it breaking lower. So that's going to be something to keep an eye on. Here's PTCT, which you can see was also requested. And this one was a very nice retest gap. In fact, these two candles right here are wicked pair candle pattern. If you're like, what in the heck is a wicked pair candle pattern? I do have a free video on that to go to Real Life Trading Dad Cam. Click on articles and then click on videos and type in the word wicked, which is a cool word. Wicked, oop, that's not ISO wicked, that's wicker. <laughs> wicked with a D. Uh, you'll get that um, video right there. What are wicked pair of candles? And you're welcome to click on that. Seven ways an art crawl is like trading. That's a fun article as well. Love this interview, good portfolio, good video here. Just all kinds of stuff is fantastic. So anyway, that was a wicked pair of candle on PTCT, very nice retest gap as well. And you had two or three opportunities to probably um, day trade and swing trade that one nicely. Here's the weekly. So we did break above the 200. We're retesting the 200. Um, so this is obviously the, this week's candle. Uh, I don't see very much other than a possible pullback all the way to 1528. Not saying that's going to happen, but if it does, that could present a pretty dope buying location. Now here's the daily chart and with the daily charts, um, it would probably more come into like the 2153 area. I think it's kind of worst case scenario. So if we get down there, I would kind of keep your eyes out for a buying opportunity. And that's really about it on PTCT. All right, here's Tesla, TSLA down 5.3%. Now Tesla, there's a lot of traders, a lot of real life traders still in bullish on Tesla. Uh, and um, I'm, what I'm really keeping a very close eye on is to see if Tesla closes below the low of Thursday's candle. If we close, which we still have 10 more minutes until market close right now, but if we close below there, Tesla's in deep trouble, my friends. That is a huge bullish candle. And we should not close below there. Um, if we close below there tomorrow, it's also not a strong sign. Again, this is the weekly 200 simple moving average that we're at. And I like the fact that we went a little bit lower today. I feel like some bears are probably gonna hop on down there, but at some point Tesla just is begging for some type of bounce. Now on Wednesday, that was a beautiful. <laughs> Wednesday was such a nice bearish retest gap. I talked about that one. Um, so anyway, Tesla right now just more or less trading sideways. I do have this in the money that's really underwater as bad as it can get, bull put spread on Tesla. So if we do close below 247, uh, 07, I will spend about 4,000 ish a contract to unravel that and we'll see Tesla continue to slide lower. So uh, keep your eyes on an actual bounce down here. Believe it or not, it's pretty extended. It's moved over a hundred points since February, late February, which is pretty dramatic. And uh, I I'm expecting a bounce down here in Tesla. So don't be 
Don't play it too bearish unless it can get a good, strong close, blow some support. All right, we got two, two left. Uh, I had a request for NGG, which this was one in the winter portfolio, and it's finally kind of coming back to life a little bit. So this is the uh, National Grid um, PLC pulling this out. Big, just gnarly bearish trend right here. Hard to follow. I was trying to think if it was going to ever bounce, and it just never really bounced off a of moving average. It just kept kind of breaking through stuff. So here's the monthly chart. So as far as it bouncing down here, I mean, this stock gaps all the time. It uh, pretty much every single day. Huge gaps to trade right into the 100 simple moving average. This is a retest gap, right? White candle gapping up. This is an evening star reversal pattern. So if NGG were to break below the low of these three candles, it would probably fill the gap, trade down into about 53 and some change, and then from there, either bounce or continue the trend. Next on the list is CPG, and that's my last for the day, Crescent Point Energy. Here's the weekly chart, and CPG trading real sideways right now. Again, this is the weekly time frame. We've been down here before, we're at a really good support, but most energies are failing like I failed organic chemistry. Big support, question is, will it bounce or will it not? Which should be a really good YouTube video. Welcome to Will It Bounce? Up next, a bowling ball from the 12th story. What I like about this is it is a good support level. You do have a nice high wave candle. You do have a good bullish candle from Thursday as most stocks did. So one of two things, I mean, if you're buying, uh, make sure you know and understand and are cool and conceptually realize the fundamentals of CPG. You could buy in here and have a pretty good risk reward. I mean, even with a stop at 550, um, it doesn't really have much farther to go other than up. But it can go to zero, so it's at 660. Pretty strong support. Just depends on your time frame and how long you're looking at playing this one. But as on most energies, you do want to have a stop because there's a lot of energies you wouldn't think are going to go lower. But if a stock like this cuts dividends, um, yeah, it's going to do what GE did, which is uh, go lower. Even though GE hasn't cut dividends yet, but they will soon. Uh, this is going to be a big deal on CPG and. Yeah, bottom line, if you're a little bit more of a shorter term trader, I would probably wait for a close above the high of today's candle and or simply a move higher than yesterday's candle, which we did not get on pretty much any stocks that I was looking for a bullish continuation higher. I was looking for a move higher than Thursday. We just didn't quite get that. Anyway, folks, you're amazing. Thanks so much for watching this. I hope it was helpful. Thank you for helping us enrich lives. That's the mission here at Real Life Trading. And I'll see you all on Wednesday for your next free real life stock review. Thanks so much. You guys rock. Bye.